the most brilliant part of the year is right now and salmon are running up these rivers and when salmon come into Sitka like this amazing gift that comes to us from from the far reaches reaches of the ocean My name is Richard Nelson. I'm a radio producer and I'm fascinated with everything about nature. I think salmon are one of the most perfect animals on earth. Maybe they're the most perfect animal on earth. First of all, they're incredibly abundant if you take care of the places where they live and spawn. Second, they come in and they feed the natural community here. They're fundamental to the richness and diversity of nature along the whole Pacific coast of North America and today especially here in Alaska because they're still as abundant as ever. Third, salmon are a miracle because they show us how life works. They come in, they spawn, they all die together, their young are born, their young go back out into the ocean, and a year or two or three or five later, they come back. They show us how life on Earth works. And finally, salmon are a perfect organism because they're delicious. They're nutritious. They're just this lavish, abundant food that comes to us. Where is there another animal anywhere on earth that does what salmon do in such abundance and such fundamental importance to our way of life and to our economies in Alaska? Salmon are perfect. My name's uh, Charlie Wilbur, and this is the beginning of my 34th season fishing. The salmon are an icon of Alaska. Well, for one, it just tastes terrific, and it's a healthy food. We're uh, very fortunate that we live right in the middle of uh, salmon-producing country here. The uh, Clinkett people here have been eating salmon for thousands of years. The Russians actively participated in procuring salmon. So salmon's a big part of our history here and the economy here, not only just for the fishermen, but for the crew members, for the people that uh, supply the boats. All fishermen have quite a bit invested in the fishery. You know, I feel pretty fortunate that uh, we're able to, to enjoy it and, and uh, to make a living at it. The last big totem pole I did down on Totem Park has a female near the base. She's a male and female salmon on either side uh, of her. And that was symbolizing the two sides to the park with a river running through it and the, and the salmon returning to the stream every year. My name's Tommy Joseph. I'm from here in Sitka, Alaska. I first got into carving uh, in 1972. I was in the third grade. I had a gentleman come to my school demonstrating wood carving for a week. I got to sit with him and make one of what he was making and that was my start. The arts are, I don't want to say overwhelming, but there's a lot of arts going on as far as, you know, sing and dance and performing arts and, and then the visual arts and carving also, yeah, that's uh, wood carving. Uh, a totem pole is a visual tool for telling a story. Salmon is a huge part of the story here in Alaska every year. I mean, right now we have salmon at the mouth of all these creeks and streams and, and beginning to head up the river. It's just part of the life cycle here and um, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing to see and, and, and have happen every year and it never gets old. There's so many ways that we use salmon in our art. A long time ago, some 28, 29 years ago, a family from Seattle came up to start a store and they talked to some fishermen and my name came up and I was hired 
Uh, the second person hired here, I had to learn it all. But oh, what a ride. It's been amazing, yes. We have a slogan up on the board that says, uh, consider us a part of your crew. And we really stand by that. So we cater to the fishermen. I really believe that uh, the fishing industry, the salmon industry in Sitka is Sitka. When you walk downtown, you'll see the art, you'll see the different displays. I don't think anyone could possibly be thinking that this was something other than a fishing community. I think all of the businesses, I'm, I'm just trying to think of, you know, the, the mechanics in town, the people who construct things for the fishing industry, the restaurants, the grocery stores, my goodness, if you just go to the grocery store and see how they're filling up those carts. I mean, we have tourism, we have other things, and all those things bring in a lot of money, but my look is that we are a fishing community. Really my favorite part was when, whenever I'm talking to the kids and like if I ask them a question and immediately they're just like, bam, I know this, I know what you're talking about, I totally get it. Jump, Sokka! So a lot of the kids have a pretty good background in understanding what fish hatcheries do. I think that really credit is due to the school systems because they really do a good job of teaching the kids the salmon life cycle. You learn it in elementary school, you go over it a lot, you get to visit hatcheries. I know the third graders go out to Medvigi Hatchery, so they kind of understand what's going on, but we try and reiterate, you know, why hatcheries do what they do. Usually when I do a thing with younger kids, you gotta keep running or you're in trouble, right? So we do things that are exercise, like the Salmon Olympics we had over there. I somehow or another invented that because I had to, was supposed to do something, but I didn't know what, and we didn't have any live salmon, so we had to use water balloons instead. When you learn about a subject, whatever subject it is, the more you learn in depth, I think the more you learn to appreciate it, right? Whether it's art or or history or, or you know our community or culture or whatever you know but it's certainly true in science.